This is Brother Peter Diamond, VaticanCatholic.com. I just wanted to make a few quick points about Sean O'Malley. He is the current so-called Bishop of Boston in the Vatican II Church. He is also the so-called Bishop who presided over the funeral, quote, mass for the deceased Senator Ted Kennedy, who was both a proponent of homosexual, quote, marriage and abortion. And on our website, vaticancatholic.com, if you go to our anti-pope section and then the section on Benedict XVI, and then you click on the video, Benedict XVI is pro-abortion just like Ted Kennedy, you will find the clip in that video where, quote, Cardinal O'Malley is conducting this incredible ceremony in honor of this notorious pro-abortionist. The reason I bring it up now is I was reading this book, a handbook on Guadalupe that was published in 1996 concerning the apparitions of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and I noticed that the preface was written by Sean O'Malley, OFM, and he wrote this preface before he was a, quote, cardinal or the bishop for the Vatican II Church in Boston, but some of the statements he makes in this preface are simply astounding in light of what we know he did for the funeral for Ted Kennedy. And I just want to quote some of these passages to illustrate the level of duplicity involved in this apostasy, that people will say one thing and do exactly the opposite, that their words mean nothing, that they will make a bare profession of faith and then proceed to deny that faith, and that it's not enough to simply claim that you hold a position, but if your actions and your other words contradict what you claim to believe in, it really means nothing. And the book is called A Handbook on Guadalupe, published by the Academy of the Immaculate. And in this preface, he's talking about the significance of Our Lady of Guadalupe and the image and how the image shows that she is with child. And he says, quote, that is the second reason I am pleased to recommend this book, which has devoted so much space to Mary as the patroness of the pro-life movement in the United States. Mary is always saying yes to life and yes to the cross. There are numerous organizations, the pro-life movement in particular, that are involved in propagating her image and the message of Mary of Guadalupe. There is no need to explain the pro-life imagery of Our Lady on the Tilma of Juan Diego. I would add that life is always at the center of the great struggle between light and darkness. In the last book of the Bible, the Apocalypse, we read about the woman about to bring forth a male child, and of another portent which appeared in the sky a huge red dragon. The dragon represents Satan, the personal power of evil as well as the powers of evil at work in history in opposing the mission of Christ and his church. Satan is waiting to destroy the child. That child is also a symbol of every child, especially every helpless baby whose life is threatened. The Holy Father says that the rejection of a human life is really a rejection of Christ. Before I continue quoting him, I just want to note that when he quotes John Paul II here, that the rejection of a human life is really a rejection of Christ, although he doesn't give the reference. It's from the encyclical Evangelium Vitae of John Paul II, and it's one of John Paul II's many statements in that encyclical which equate man with Christ. He's saying that to reject any human life is equivalent to rejecting Christ. Continuing with the quote, It was the Holy Father who described well our modern society as a, quote, culture of death, she who was responsible for the conversion of millions of Indians, who were involved in sacrificing thousands of victims to their false gods, is certainly capable of stopping the anti-life juggernaut. But she is waiting for our participation in this all-out battle, not only for human life, but for the souls of, yes, even the abortionists. With her help, we too shall say fiat, yes to life, yes to the cross, yes to love." End quote. As I was reading this, I found it astounding that this man could say these things, that the child is threatened by Satan, and that this child represents the aborted children, and that we must do what we can to oppose abortion. While he is the one 
who publicly commemorated as a servant of Christ, Ted Kennedy, it's simply amazing. Here's what this heretic said at the funeral for Ted Kennedy, who not only was pro-homosexual marriage, but one of the most notorious proponents of abortion in the history of the United States. He commemorated him as a servant of Christ. His churches gave him communion throughout his life. Here it is. The first audio comes from a different priest who begins the commemoration, and then they switch it over to O'Malley. Let us, let us pray. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us on our pilgrimage way to your kingdom. May our dear friend, Ted, who shared in the Eucharist, come to the banquet of life Christ prepared for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And His Eminence Cardinal Sean O'Malley will conduct the final commendation. Mr. President, we thank you for your presence and for your words of appreciation for the life and work of Senator Kennedy. We've gathered here today to pray for a man who has been such an important part of our history and our country. We are here because Ted Kennedy shared our belief in prayer and in eternal life. And now let us commend Ted's soul to God's loving mercy. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Abilo benedicaris in cuius honore cremalis. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Edward in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, we shall rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Edward in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servants and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. So, there it is. He thanks Obama for his presence at the commemoration of Ted Kennedy. Obama's presence in the building is an abomination in and of itself. He thanks him for his words in appreciation of Kennedy's life and work. So, he appreciates Kennedy's lifelong crusade for abortion and gay, quote, marriage and other liberal causes. He clearly says that Ted Kennedy will reign with Christ, that he's their brother in Christ, etc. It is utter apostasy. It's breathtaking apostasy. It's an abomination that exceeds an appropriate description, but it really shows the duplicity and the phoniness, the phoniness of the Vatican II Church in all of these false conservatives who claim to be pro-life, who claim to be conservative, while they accept false religions or while they accept abortion. It exposes that. And it's just amazing that this guy had the audacity to say that Satan wants to destroy the child, that's every child. He wants to bring about this culture of death, equating the promotion of abortion with Satan's work. Well, what he's doing is, by commemorating Ted Kennedy and clearly accepting abortion, he is amalgamating what he thinks Christ is with Satan because he has already written that Satan is for abortion so Ted Kennedy represents Satan and he's saying Satan Ted Kennedy is his brother in Christ he will reign with Christ he is to be appreciated for his life in Christ 
He is a servant of Christ. He is therefore combining, bringing them together, Satan and their false version of Christ. And this reminds me of a Novus Ordo apologist who appeared on a Protestant radio program. And the Protestant was saying that he thinks the Novus Ordo apologist is a heretic and he has to say that in charity because he thinks that all Catholics are heretics. And the Novus Ordo, quote, apologist was very respectful of the Protestant and said that he considered him a Christian and considered them brothers in Christ, but that the Protestant simply needed to come to the correct conclusions on these issues. And they were laughing and joking as the Protestant is denouncing the Catholic beliefs as anti-Christian and a false gospel. And what it represented was that the Vatican II Church combines Antichrist and Christ because the Protestant is denying that which the Novus Ordo apologist believes to be of Christ, the Eucharist, Mary, the papacy. Okay, so he is anti those things of Christ. He is Antichrist. Protestants who reject Catholic teaching are Antichrist. But the Novus Ordo apologist is still saying the guy's a Christian. He's saying he's my brother in Christ. We are sharing the Christian faith. We just have a few disagreements. By doing that, he is actually amalgamating Christ and Antichrist. He's saying that you can be Antichrist, but still be of Christ. And that's what Sean O'Malley and the Vatican II hierarchy do on abortion. They amalgamate Satan and Christ, their false version of Christ. And that is really what the Church of the Antichrist represents.